Hey guys, this is Post Production Pie with SRLounge.com. All right guys, so now we're gonna go over what I call major cropping. Now major cropping is what I refer to as when we need to basically uh, take a composition and make major changes to it. We need to crop in so severely that we're losing a lot of our megapixels and we're doing it basically for compositional purposes. So for example, we don't have too many images in here that have messed up compositions. Uh, in fact, all these should be good compositions actually, but we do have one image right here that I can change to a different composition via major cropping. So right now, basically, if we click R, actually I'm going to hit F twice to go full screen. Uh, let's hit R to jump into our cropping overlay. We have this crop currently set, which is our minor crop. Now, if I hit O to cycle my view, I can see that we're not really following, uh, you know, what the, basically the thought that I had when I shot this is I wanted a negative space image. So I wanted an image that had the subject far to the right, and he's looking to the left, which is my nice bird right there. And uh, the, the left side of the frame is basically pretty open, and it kind of leaves you know, a lot of negative space, and I, I like that kind of look. There's nothing wrong with this composition, and it actually still fits the composition rule of this spiral right here. Um, but if we wanted to crop this to a rule of thirds, then we need to make a significant crop. We need to change this quite a bit. And let's do that right now. So what we're going to do is switch to our rule of thirds. I cycled through until uh, I got to it by hitting O. And then uh, we're going to pull from this left edge or from whatever edge you want. And because this proportions are strained, we don't need to hold shift because these are uh, not strained. I mean, it's not stressed out. It's constrained. <laughs> because our proportions are constrained, we don't need to hold shift. It's going to retain our original image aspect ratio here. But uh, if it's not selected and you have this unlocked, if you click and drag, it's going to basically free transform unless you're holding the shift key. If you're holding shift while you're doing it, it'll also constrain proportions as well. So just remember that while you're cropping. We're going to lock it for now. I'm going to drag it till our little birdie is right on my right one-third line. Now what, one thing to be careful of is I don't want to leave too much space above his head. If I hit R right now so we can view this crop, leaving that much space above his head in the frame it kind of looks a little awkward. So I'm going to pull this down. Now if I had pretty clouds and like a better horizon line, I'd probably leave my crop right here on the one third, uh, on the well, on the two third line for the horizon, and one third on on him, and it would look like this. But my horizon line doesn't look that great. My mountains don't look that great. So I'm going to pull it down more, just because I think this water looks a little bit better than the actual mountains. So let's click to right there, leave a little bit of space above his head, but not too much. I'm going to leave a little bit more actually, and that looks fine right there. So now we're following the rule of thirds. Uh, we've done a major crop, so we've actually taken a 21 megapixel file, and I think we've cropped, let's see, I'm going to pull up our information right now. So, information by hitting I, by the way. So our resolution right now is 4145. It previously was a 21 megapixel file, which is like 5,500 pixels or something like that. So we've cropped essentially 20% of the image out. Now, this is still larger than a 10 megapixel file, so we still have a lot of, of information here, and we can still blow it up to whatever size you want, basically. But one tip I have for you guys is that when I'm traveling, if I know, I, I mean, I, when I travel, I take a 7200 lens with me. And that's the longest lens I take because if I take a 300 or a 400, I mean, those are ridiculous. And I don't want to be carrying those around all the time. So when I'm traveling, I always switch my camera to full raw because I know that if I switch to full raw and I shoot something and it's not close enough, I can crop in and get a little bit of extra zoom digitally by cropping in on my image in post-production. So it's just a little tip, guys, if you guys are out shooting, uh, you know, on traveling, you don't have the longest lens that you want, shoot in a larger raw format so that you can actually crop in later on and have enough detail. All right, so now that we've cropped on this image, we need to do one other thing, which is enhance our detail because we've cropped a significant portion of our pixels out. I'm going to try and talk slower so I don't sound like I'm slurring all my words. All right, guys, so let's go down to the detail panel. So we're going to collapse this panel. Actually, we just scroll down. I'm going to collapse all of them. Well, let's just go to solo mode because it's easier for these tutorials to not have so much to look at at once. Let's click on details. And now we're going to zoom one to one. And we're going to enhance this image based on uh, this one to one view. So at one to one, I mean, on this image, we can still uh, basically print this as like an eight by 12 or even like, you know, we'll probably get it away with a 12 by 18 without doing too much enlargement or additional Photoshop enlargement. What I'd recommend is that if you guys know you need to enlarge this image, if you want to print it as like a, even as a 12 by 18, I'd probably do enlargement. So what I would do is I'd load it into Photoshop, I'd enlarge the image, and then what I'd bring it back into Lightroom and then apply these detail settings. 
Right now, we'll just say that we're printing this for an 8x12. It's already large enough, so let's just sharpen it for that. And so we're going to zoom to 1 to 1. And by the way, we're going to cover that uh, whole process in a later tutorial on this, on this DVD on how to basically enhance and enlarge, enlarge an image for printing. So now that we're seeing this 1 to 1, we're going to go to Detail. We're going to Sharpen. I'm going to hold down Shift while clicking up while my mouse is over each of these so I can kind of move it by larger increments until I get it close to where I want. I think 85 amount is good. I'm going to bump up my radius. Uh, I don't want to go up too high because it's going to really kind of start looking nasty for, back of, uh, for lack of a better word. Radius 1.5 looks nice. We're going to take detail up just a little bit to say 30. And then what I'm going to do now is tweak my noise reduction. If we want to play with our masking a little bit to kind of make it so it doesn't sharpen so much of this small detail, all we got to do is pull masking up. And if you guys remember when we went over the detail panel, in the previous discussion, holding Alt or Option while clicking and dragging masking will let you see exactly what it's doing. So uh, when we take masking up to about 20, 25, what we're seeing is that most of the enhancements over like the, uh, like the grain and stuff like that are being removed while only the stronger lines are being enhanced still with a sharpening effect. We're going to leave this at zero for now and then if we need to use it after we apply our noise reduction, we'll get to it then. So what I'm going to do is, this image actually looks fine, to be honest, to me, where it's at right now. I, I like this amount of grain. Uh, I, feel, I feel like it looks really nice. It looks kind of like film grain, which is something that I love and we try and mimic all the time anyway. But if you do want to reduce the noise, we can take noise reduction luminance up. And let's take it up to about 30. And so that's going to reduce some of the noise. We want to be careful not to take it up too high because even though we can get this perfectly smooth by going up to like 70, we're killing a lot of the detail in like the feathers. So the feathers just become looking like this nice smoothed over painting rather than looking like feathers. So I'm going to take this down to about, we'll say 25 to 30. And that's a good amount right there. What I might do is also increase color noise reduction if we have color noise. Now let's check what this setting was shot at. I think it was shot at 100 ISO. So, oh no, 800 ISO. This must have been getting kind of dark. So we can do a little bit of color noise reduction uh, because this was shot at a relatively high ISO and it's going to basically make these, uh, you'll see if we zoom in 3 to 1 by clicking on the navigator, basically the noise here has kind of like a, a color shift to it. And if we click down on this, oops, not on luminance, sorry, I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. If we move this color slider down, we start seeing more of that color noise. And color noise is represented by seeing all these little different specks of color in our noise. So rather than just seeing grain, we're seeing differences in color within that grain. So instead of seeing just blue over this area, because we're over the mountain area right now, so the mountain should be blue, and what we're seeing is blues, green, uh, yellows, grays, we're seeing all these kind of mixed in. So let's raise up that color noise reduction until basically all we see is that one standard color. So I'm going to take it up to about 40. And that looks fine right there. Let's go back to one to one. Let's check this out. And this looks good. We've reduced some of the noise, but we haven't killed all the detail. Um, we have sharpened it, and so now our cropped file is going to print out much, much better than if we just cropped in and we didn't make these detail enhancement adjustments. If you guys want to take sharpening up a little bit more, you can. Um, it's really up to you. I think 85 to 90 is a good amount, and it should be sufficient. So I'm going to hit I again. Let's zoom out to see our finished image. Well, it's not finished. We've just finished the detail enhancement. We still need to actually do the basic processing on it. All right, so now we're going to click over on our snapshots to add a new snapshot. We're going to save this as 02, and this is going to be a major crop plus detail enhancing. All right, guys, so that's how you make a major crop for your composition and then do detail enhancing to kind of correct for the loss of resolution. Great, guys, let's go on to the next tutorial.